gonna be a sad one today. I've got my tissues ready. Hi guys, really sad news. Some of you may have already seen on social media that Brenda sadly passed away a week ago. It's been a strange week as you can probably imagine. In this video I just want to go through basically what happened. I am filming a vlog all this week just kind of talking about how I feel about everything. Um, she died on the Tuesday um, which is literally a week ago today and I started the vlog on Friday um, so I'm just going to film for a week um, and just kind of check in every day and see how I feel and just kind of talk through the kind of a grieving process but this video is basically um what happened how, you know how it all happened so i'll try and make it as quick as i can sunday daytime my husband and i had a day out actually um with some friends of ours um kind of came home early evening she was okay she was just kind of her usual self really my mother-in-law had been with her for the day me and my husband with her with her all evening you know obviously and got her changed clean pad on and everything and she was fine um managed to get a reasonable amount of drink down her not masses amount but it was a fair amount and then she just the choking you know it was just getting worse and worse um this whole kind of fluid um that was in her lungs and her throat and stuff um some of you who have seen my other vlogs know exactly what i'm talking about you know she had this thing where she couldn't swallow and um her food and drink properly and basically was getting fluid on the lungs and, and that just literally within maybe 20 minutes it just got really scary um she was really choking she was basically drowning it really was really frightening so we had her sitting right up and i was like banging her chest and her back and everything um we had her over on her side um and my husband just looked at me and and said you know you, you've got to call an ambulance because we we're, we're not qualified to deal with something like that we don't know what we're doing we knew she was gonna die <laughs> you know we we weren't stupid we knew at some point that was gonna happen um, you certainly don't want it to happen in that way you want it to be peaceful and this wasn't peaceful so we called the ambulance within minutes obviously they were there um, and they were really really nice um, two ambulance technicians arrived and then um, shortly followed by a paramedic they put an oxygen mask on her um, and the paramedic described to me that the stuff that was in this oxygen mask is basically what you would have in like an asthma inhaler and it just basically relaxed her and opened up her lungs and within minutes of this mask being on she was like a new woman you know she was pretty much asleep she was really relaxed um was breathing much better they were probably with us i'd say probably around two hours um the paramedic got on the phone and um, was talking to the doctors and everything um, and organised for a doctor to come out to us that evening to give her an injection. The injection was basically whatever it was that was in the um, oxygen mask, that was what was in this injection. So it was just kind of continuing on from that. I was obviously a little upset. Um, Stefan was worried. We obviously called my mother-in-law as well and she, she came over once they all left um Stefan went up to bed and me and my mother-in-law stayed up with Brenda we knew um that, that it was kind of the end you know the paramedic um was was very honest and you know we, we were very honest with her you know we said that we know exactly what's going on we're not kind of we're not loved ones that are going to get really upset if you tell us that she's going to die or anything like that we knew what was happening we knew the time had come and you know she'd had enough i mean the poor woman's been in bed for like a year and a half and barely knows her own name so why 
why I prolong this, you know. So we was very kind of aware of what was happening and okay with that. Um, the paramedic suggested that she become kneel by mouth just because I tried a couple of times while they were there to give her a drink um, and it it just wasn't happening. It just wasn't going down. She was choking on it instantly, um, you know, and we'd kind of just calmed her down. We'd just got her breathing um, back to kind of normal and so to then start giving her food and drink again and have the choke again and it, it just, it wasn't fair. So we stayed up until the doctor arrived she gave her the injection she basically said exactly what the paramedic had said we was all on the same page so once the doctor left me and my mother-in-law spoke and I said I, I really don't want her to be by herself um, you know that's not what I wanted for Brenda I wanted someone with her I was quite prepared to be that person um, so I literally just got a couple of hours sleep and then came back down and my mother-in-law left kind of early early morning and then that was it really that was it for the next couple of days we had the odd nurse come in to give her these injections um obviously she was nil by mouth so we didn't have to worry about um feeding her or giving her a drink or anything even if we'd wanted to give her something to eat and drink, she was asleep the whole time. She slept from that kind of moment they put that mask on her to the very end. She was pretty much fast asleep. Um, so we just kept her comfortable. I basically set up camp next to her. I got my chair and, you know, blankets and pillows and everything. And that's pretty much where I stayed barring a couple of hours here and there um, whether it be on the sofa or my mother-in-law would sit with her while I went upstairs and got a couple of hours sleep um, just didn't want her to be by herself I didn't want to leave her a few people offered to come and sit with her while I went out for a walk or you know if I wanted to get anything from the shops or anything I, I didn't want to you know I didn't want to go for a walk I wouldn't have enjoyed the walk I would have been constantly worried and I knew that if I had left her she probably would have gone and I wanted to be there you know I, I wanted to be at least in the house <laughs> at the time of it happening um, and I didn't want her to be by herself that would have really upset me so we were exhausted my mother-in-law was pretty much you know the same as me um, we were really really knackered <laughs> um it was a long few days thankfully it didn't go on for very long because i if i'm honest i don't really know how much longer i could have done it for because i really was getting tired and i was starting to feel a bit ill with it me and my husband and my mother-in-law we were all in our lounge where Brenda was. The telly was on and we was just chatting amongst the three of us. I was getting up and down and, you know, checking on Brenda and giving her a kiss or whatever. And I'd had a nice day with her. I'd played her some like of her favorite music that day. And, um, you know, it had been a nice day. I'd been with her, I think, bar in a bath. I'd, I'd been with her the whole day. Uh, my mother-in-law had been in and out. About an hour or so leading up to her passing, um, her breathing did change. I mean, her breathing had been very laboured, obviously, for a few days ever since it had all happened on the Sunday. Um, but her breathing became really deep. I mean, to the point that basically her whole body was kind of coming forward off the bed and it was this real kind of gasp, like a, you know, um and for those of you that have seen my other vlogs you'll know that she did this thing with her tongue where this tongue would constantly wiggle waggle around um and even in kind of her coma like state that she'd been in for days this tongue was still going and i noticed on the tuesday it actually stopped I said to my mother-in-law i think it's going to happen tonight you know i think um I think it's going to be soon. I, I I couldn't see her making the next day. Like I said, we was all just sitting there. 
and I don't know why but I just I got up and I walked over to her and it must have just happened just as I was walking over to her um, because literally as I got up and walked over my mother-in-law kind of turned in her chair you know she was was next to Brenda and she turned in her chair to look at her I, I looked over and was like she's gone um, and she must have just literally as I'd got up to walk over and, and Julia had turned in her chair you know she she'd just gone then um, and I knew instantly what did I think I don't know what I thought obviously I was really upset I did cry um, I wasn't kind of hysterical because obviously we expected it and I was just thankful that for her sake and for ours it was over with um, you know, that may sound a little harsh to some people but she really did have no life it was just so sad to see her like that and I was so happy that she wasn't by herself you know I think as far as her death could go I mean me and my mother-in-law have said this a few times since it happened um, as far as, as her death goes it was perfect it was kind of exactly what we wanted she was calm she knew nothing about it you know she'd been asleep for three days um she was she was calm she was happy she was comfortable she wasn't in any pain um she wasn't distressed in any way and she had me and my husband and julia sitting there with her um you know she had some background noise and she could hear voices that she was familiar with um and it, you know who could ask for better it, it took me probably about 10 minutes to convince my mother-in-law that she had actually died because of her um, airflow mattress that she had on her bed which was obviously still plugged in and was plugged in until they actually took her away the following day because if you you know if you unplug it she'll kind of sink it's like letting the mattress down um, so we couldn't turn the thing off so the bed was still moving which of course <laughs> which made her look a bit alive at times I mean obviously you do kind of get some movement from them that's quite common anyway and you get the last breath and um, you know little things do happen um, once they've gone and which can make them appear to still be alive but she wasn't you know I knew instantly just by looking at her um, so once I'd kind of convinced them that <laughs> it had in fact happened, we, we made a cup of tea. We sat there and I was stroking her head and um, gave her a little kiss and we were just talking and exactly how we were before she had gone. Then we rang, you know, who you ring to tell them it happened and it was just a case of waiting for the doctor to come out to confirm in fact she was dead Julia stayed with her I got a few hours sleep um, which as you can imagine was probably the best few hours sleep I'd had for quite a few days once the doctor left which was about five o'clock in the morning me and my mother-in-law laid the body out gave her a wash um, put some clean clothes on her um, changed a pad my mother-in-law left I sat with her, I was by myself with her for about two or three hours, which was nice. I just sat with her and had the telly on and, you know, just she wasn't alone. And then the undertakers came kind of 10 o'clock in the morning, I guess. Um, yeah, and that was, that was kind of it. It was very calm. Um... It was, it was what you would want. It's certainly what I would want. But it was a happy release for everybody. I feel very sad. But that is, that is it really. That's all I can tell you, you know she died of her dementia 
the doctor said it was down to her you know her swallowing and everything and and the build up of this fluid and like i said she wasn't in pain she wasn't unhappy she didn't know anything about it um and she wasn't alone and she was well loved and looked after i just want to let you all know what happened and so you know that she wasn't in any pain or anything um, and we done everything we could. I think I did quite well. I didn't cry. <laughs> I only needed my tissue a little bit. But I will be continuing with my blog. Um, you know, there's still a lot of things I want to kind of talk about and stuff. Um, and just because I'm not a carer anymore doesn't mean I can't do that. Um, so I will be uploading videos as regularly as I can. Um, any questions, let me know. Um, Oh, and thank you as well to everyone. I posted on the Facebook pages that I kind of follow, the dementia Facebook pages. I um, wrote about Brenda and, you know, the fact that she had passed and everything. And everyone had such lovely things to say, you know, everyone's so supportive. And it does help because when you're sitting there and you're maybe by yourself, um, you know, and certainly in my situation, I was by myself the first time in a long time um and you reading these comments from people it you know it does it does cheer you up and it does make you feel a bit better and not quite so upset and, and lonely with it all so thank you and i'll see you soon bye guys